know, if you're Bill Walsh, you got a lot of opportunities available to you. You have a team that can't play defense against the rush, and you have a great quarterback, Steve Stenstrom. Carver gets Stenstrom, and they're going to rule it an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass. They say that Steve Stenstrom's arm was in motion when Shante Carver applied the hit from the rear. Watch the top side of your screen. Shante Carver just does a speed rush. You can see he gets right around the corner. The quarterback doesn't see him. That's called the blind side. He can't see it coming, and that's where you don't want to get hit from behind. Shante saying, hey, I want my 39th quarterback sack in my career here at ASU. He's the all-time ASU sack leader with 38 of them going into the game here today. Stenstrom is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Well here this afternoon. This is a third and six for the Cardinal as Shaw goes in motion. Bernstein coming on the rush and Shante Carver closes in for the sack. Carver got the sack but give credit to Brent Bernstein who applied the initial pressure and I think made it a little easier for sure playing well. You want him fresh. You, that gives you the ability. Shante does a little spin move. He keeps going. Stenstrom goes. Oh. Cougar ball, first and ten. This is Delton Johnson. He's met head on by Shante Carver for a loss of a yard. And it doesn't take Carver long to establish his presence here against the team that. Again, it's Delton Johnson and Carver again in pursuit. He slows him up. Ken Talanoa wrapped it up for ASU, and the result is a loss of two. You know, one thing, and this is just an early observation, but so far Washington State has run the ball three times. They've run it right at Shante Carver. Porter goes down at the two. Sacked by Shante Carver. Shante's fifth sack of the season, the 36th of his Arizona State career. Well, Shante's best pass rush in the country. He does a little swim move. There's the spin. A lot of moves in his arsenal. He gets a sack, kind of a little tap for a sack, but hey, it counts. Sacks a sack, and that is, I believe, his 36th in his career at ASU. He's already the sack leader at ASU, and every one will just add on to that record this year. You know, Pat Jones didn't learn, because you watch Louisville last week, they used a quick passing game. That time, he's second down. A lot of folks here compare Joe Johnson to Shante Carver, except uh, actually Joe Johnson's a bit bigger than Shante, has that kind of quickness, and has had a Tremendous season thus far. At least nine. Give Jeff Brown more time. Put him in the shotgun where his head's up and he can see the defensive line and hopefully find Shante Carver. But here comes Carver from the rear and Shante Carver with the sack at the 41 yard line. Pouting off about how he's going to handle Shante and he was going against Joe Johnson, who he considered to be better, right off the beat. First down, Barnes off the play fake, sheds Gavin Hill, but can't escape the grasp of Shante Carver at the 21-yard line. I'll tell you what, this is the exact scenario that the Sun Devils were looking for. They want to force the Bruins into a passing situation where they can blitz, use their speed, have those eight men up on the line of strip of the ball, too. John Barnes, what a story. Four colleges in four years, played at UCSB, Western Oregon, Saddleback. Field goal just to keep that streak alive. John Barnes in a quarterback. He's sacked by Carver. The ball's loose, and the Sun Devils have it again. Recovered by Gavin Hill at the UCLA. Safety. It oh, is indeed a safety. Marcus Soward hurried over, 
tried to get it before it went out of bounds. He couldn't reach it quite in time, but still. At the middle, watch how long his arms are to block this. They had 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Shante was dead in the middle, almost like a, a nose guard, a nose tackle this time. And there's the ball in the end zone. But for Shante Carver this time, who has made a career out of sniffing down quarterbacks. Boy, he just took him down. What a mismatch that is. Sets up yet another punt for Brandon Brookfield, and it's blocked. Blocked by Shante Carver. He pulled it. In basketball, he would have been called for it. You know, it's amazing. That wasn't even a punt block. That was just good effort by Shante. Everybody else was going back to the return. Nobody blocked him. He ran in there and made the good heads up play. And I want those arms. Between the third What's it like being a rush end? What's it like? Uh, it gives you a lot of freedom. Uh, my main concern is getting to the quarterback, and you know that's the fun part of the game, getting to the quarterback and uh, making them have a bad day. So uh, what do you enjoy or dislike about your position? I enjoy being on the outside, uh, rushing, rushing the quarterback. Uh, and I enjoy, I enjoy when people try and double team me. Uh, I I just enjoy playing football. You know, uh, football is a game I love, and you know, I if I wasn't doing football, I'd probably be coaching football. So it's football is a big part of my life. Um, what's your favorite part of the game? I'm just asking that. Well, that okay. Well, it's the same question. Okay. What do I dislike? Well, it says enjoy or dislike. So, you, yeah. do you dislike anything about football? I dislike losing, uh, and I and I dislike it when when uh, there's cheap shots or you know when when guys on the other side or guys in my team are constantly talking. Uh, you know, that's not that's not what the game's all about. The game is about hitting and. And just playing football, you know, all the other stuff, talking and and trying to cheap shot someone. That's not what football is all about. Now, do you have a favorite part of the game? Is there a favorite part? Is sacking the quarterback for you probably the favorite part? No, I think the favorite part of my game is just having good competition. You know, uh, having a team that that's going to play hard against you, and you can play hard against them, and it's a hard fought game. I think that's my favorite part of the game. Okay, what does it mean to you to be a Lombardi finalist? Well, when you think about Lombardi, you think about a guy who's a, a great coach and who taught his players what football was all about. And that's why I think he won. He, he taught his players <laughs> how to play football and how to get the most out of what they're doing. And, and I think... Uh, that's what Lombardi means to me. It means that I've I've come all this way and, I, and I'm playing football the way Lombardi might might like football to be played. Okay. Um, what are your goals now and in the future? Right now, I just want to help my team win. Um, you know, we're having a hard season this year, but I think we're we're sticking in. We're not giving up. We're still playing hard. Um, in the future, you know, if I don't get to play football, I love to coach football because I, I, I love football. And, and uh, you know, if I get the opportunity to play, you know, on the next level, that would be a dream come true. If not, um, I'd like to coach. Okay. How has football affected your life? Hold on. Okay, how has football affected your life? Uh, it's affected my life in a lot of ways. Uh, it 
kids kept me from getting in trouble. You know, uh, it's uh, taught me discipline. It's uh, taught me that you know, you in 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 life, you're gonna you go through things, whether it's winning or losing, whether you know you're behind or ahead, you're favorite or you're not. It teaches you how to just take things, you know, our motto is one at a time, how to take things one at a time and, and, and just concentrate on that instead of the next play, you know, you just concentrate on that play, then you worry about the next play. I, I think it's just taught me good values and in, in, in football also in life because it, it, it goes both ways. Um, I think it's taught me how to be a man. So to what do you, do you attribute your success? I attribute my success to my coaches, Coach Larry Marmi, uh, Coach Snyder, Coach Lovey Smith, Coach Marinelli, all the coaches I've had <clears throat> over my life, including Pop Warner, high school, you know, and and a lot of my statistical success as far as sacks, I contribute to my DBs and, and the other guys that play with me. Okay, well, let's just talk about the, uh, the UW co game coming up on Saturday. Here's a team that, uh, you know, perennial, one of the most po powerful teams in the country year in and year out. This year they're on probation, so uh, they can't win the title, but I would think that would make them even harder to play because they, they absolutely have nothing to lose. Yeah, that's true. Uh... They they still know they're one of the one of the better teams in the league, and they still play like that. Uh, I, you know, it, I haven't beat them yet. As you know, as long as I've been playing, I don't think we beat them. And you know, they're a tough team, and we just got to go out there and, and play as hard as we can, and and have things go our way, make some big plays, and, and don't give up any big plays. And I think we have a good chance of beating them. Reroll, reroll, stop the madness, stop the damn madness. Hey, headache. <laughs> I'll get you fucking Thursday, so you we better just it. watch it, man. Stop the damn madness, baby. Hey, <laughs> stop it. We do it, man. You better, you better teach your young in there something. Oh, All right. Don't worry about it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Ready? Where's the roll? Where's the roll? Okay. Um. About this team, you know, you got the victory at Stanford, and I think for the first time this year, you made the plays when you had to make the plays to win the game. Yeah, we made some plays when we had to, but we still gave up a lot of big plays, you know. Until we stop doing that, you know, it's going to be a struggle. You know, if you take away four, four plays, four of their big plays they had against us, they didn't do anything against us, you know. We gave them a lot of their points, and that made it harder for us to win, but... Uh, Thank God our offense scored, and you know, and we held them in some key situations. And you know, victory is always nice to have, especially when you haven't had one. It's money to pay the $3,500 a month rent at this McCormick Ranch home. Don't as do that. You're walking in front of me. Don't have to oh. do that. That's a preponderance of the house on that side. All right. Three, two, Three, one. Two, one. The Attorney General's office says James Denlap used his client's money to pay the $3,500 a month rent here at this McCormick Ranch home. Is that not right? Yes, yeah, stupid. Don't even stupid. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. Three, yeah. two, one. The Attorney General's office says James Dunlap used his client's money to pay the $3,500 a month rent to pay for this... God, I'm sorry. Two, one. The Attorney General's office says James Dunlap used his client's money to pay the $3,500 a month rent here at this McCormick Ranch home, as well as to pay for a BMW, a Mercedes, and a European vacation. One more? Yeah. Come on. Okay, three, two, hold tune. Three, two, one. 
The Attorney General's office says James Denlep used his client's money to pay the $3,500 a month rent here at this McCormick Ranch home, as well as to buy a BMW, a Mercedes Benz, and a European to pay for, sorry. And take, and take European vacations. And pay for. Take, okay. Euro take European vacations. Three, two. Three, two, one.